So my first time golfing in Germany. Let's see how we get on. Hi guys, Peter Finch here and welcome down to the Beckenbauer course here at the Quellness Golf Resort and we're going to be doing a series of course vlog videos. This is going to be a three part 18 hole match against, well, myself today, but I'm going to be testing myself off the back tees at this European tour venue. If you are new to the channel guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit that like button and please comment below on everything that you see in today's video. So it's going to be three six hole parts and within those parts I'm going to be talking through specific shots that I'm playing and then hopefully uh, play them well so you guys can learn something from them. If I don't play them well please forgive me it is early in the morning and this tee shot is going to be my first shot that I've ever hit in Germany so the pressure's on and the excitement is building. Can you tell I've had a little bit of a coffee. John is on the camera as well the first hole here is about 440 yards so it's 385 meters. So John, can you calculate that? You're plus 10%? No. Okay, so it's that <laughs> in meters. Uh, just need to keep it left of that bunker. But like I said, this is my first swing, my first shot. Off the back tees. Let's see how we go. So 135 yards left into this first hole. Um, surprisingly good uh, with that tee shot. The pin is back left and I don't generally want to be going beyond this pin, so I'm going to be hitting a, basically a 130 shot. There's a little bit of wind, it's kind of picking up and dying down. I'm just going to hit a choke down 9-iron. Just hold it up, a little flighted one, just a little, little flighted one. That way. Oh, so high. No. Yeah. That's not the shot that I had in mind. So unlike the European Tour professionals, who I'm judging myself against here, I've not quite had my full warm-up. I'm a little bit disappointed, but I need to get over that. I need to move on with my life and with my golf and hit a good chip shot. Let's go. So I've come up short of this green and it wasn't a very good shot, but now becomes the problem of shot selection. So I've got my three wedges, I got my 60, I got my 54, and I got my 50 degree, and it's just about judging what type of shot that I want to play. Now the first shot, the first option, will be a bump and run into the bank, hitting there, running up to the pin. The only problem with that, a little bit wet this morning, it's a little bit cold, it's going to be unpredictable what it does off that slope, so I need to carry that. Then I need to get it running. Now what's going to be the most predictable running shot? Probably with my 54 degree. If I hit my 60 degree, it's going to be a bit more flighted, a bit more check, is that going to be as reliable as my 54? Maybe not. So it's going to be my 54 degree, a little bit of a chip and run, just getting onto the green and then just letting it roll down to the hole. Chance for a par. All right, par first hole, not too bad really. So water basically all on the right of this hole and in the front of the green. Got 223 meters from the back, so that's going to be 250 yards basically to that. So I'm going to hit a shot, probably a five wood, which finishes short of that location. It's going to leave me a slightly longer second over the water, but I don't want to put myself in a situation where I'm going to be in a bunker or in the water. So just a five wood, hopefully down the center. Yeah, it's okay. Not a very good strike though. It's going to leave me a little bit longer than I wanted. 147 and <laughs> I don't want to be short on this one. Uh, we've got water, we've got a nice little ornate bridge. So I'm going to be going, I don't know, because it feels like it's a little bit into the breeze. So I'm going to hit a seven iron, which if it does go a little bit long, it's only going to be finishing in the back bunker. This is one of those course management, course management situations where you're trying to speak but also there's no point in being short literally no future because of the water so you have to go long as you miss and with a bit of wind into full on seven iron 
most likely will carry over the pin to the back of the green, but what's the point of being sure? So the only other thing I'm going to do shot selection wise here is aim for the centre of the green and try and cut it back. There's no point going for the pin, there's a little bit of danger right and obviously it's far right of the green. Pushed it. Yeah. Oh, that will do. So that's the advantage of basically playing a bad shot. So I've aimed at the center of the green, pushed it, and it's actually ended up okay. And because I've clubbed up, I was never going to be short. Unless it's a terrible shot, which was which was possible. I'm not going to lie, but got a bit of chance. Of course, management who knew it could work. So something I've been trying to do over my putts is to get a lot more instinctive on the reeds. Now the way that I'm doing that is getting set up to a putt, basically as though I'm about to hit it and then checking the line, seeing what my first instinct is and then going on to read the putt as I normally would do from behind the ball and then behind the hole. Usually what you'll find, and a lot of players do find this, is that their first read, their first impression of a putt is usually right. Instinctively, they get a sense of what the putt is going to do. And what I'm doing with that in my own game is allowing myself to be a bit more freer with my decision making and a lot less second guessing. So I get my initial read, feel if that's right, check it from both angles to make sure I'm not missing anything crazy and then go ahead and hit it. So my first initial thought, so it just feels like it's going to be from right to left, and then I'll go and check it. Oh, it's oh, dude! It's okay. Level par, two holes, tricky one, navigated. Could have been a, could have been a birdie. Well, could have been, John. Well, could have been. been. Now you know the German swear word. Well, around right, it's Dortmund. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jürgen, oh, Jürgen Dortmund. Klopp. Dortmund. <laughs> Klopp. So third hole. This is just a. A smash, by the looks of it. Par five, 500 meters, so 550 yards off this tee, so it's quite a long one. And it's basically center, give it a smack. There's a bit of danger right with water, so I'm gonna be favoring the left side. Pick a target in the background and just whack it, basically, John. Is that your professional coaching opinion? Yeah, people pay for this, you know. Yeah. Whack it, okay. <laughs> Tune in for more insight, Tune in folks. For more, yeah. <laughs> so just, just okay. Uh, literally right on the edge. I've got two six three yards left to the pin, and I've got a little mini driver out. I'm off a hanging lie, so it's going to move the ball a little bit from left to right. Generally, because the ball's a little bit below my feet, dynamic lie will be changing. So I need to swing a little bit off to the left hand side to avoid this tree in front. The wind is kind of this way, so it might give me a little bit of help, but with this lie, with the fact that just around the green there's just bunkers, I'm just gonna aim this left swing hard, hope it moves back. Theory of this hole so far, John, just it whack is. it, basically. <laughs> that, I think it's just a bit short. Like, that one's absolutely on it all the way. That's one of the first times I've hit this off the deck. I mean, he was lying amazing, to be fair, but... Right, Germany, my favorite place to play golf. <laughs> oh! Look at the jog, look at the spring. He's good at that distance, though. He's not bad. So it feels right to left again. Yeah, definitely sloping that way. Touch down. I didn't hit it hard enough last time. Visualising that curve. Got this job. I have got this in the bag. <laughs> How rude! Wow! <laughs> So far, Germany's just keeping you at bay, really. Yeah, well, pars on par fives are never 
never great. I mean, it's 550 yards. It's not a yeah. short one. And I didn't want to say you have below par. I didn't want. To, I didn't. You know. I didn't want to. You know. I think. Have I think. A go. I mean, level par through the first three holes, not warming up. That's that's absolutely fine. <laughs> I need. I need about five to six holes to warm up after I've warmed up. So <laughs> this is. This is great. I'm absolutely fine with this. So all those videos where you say to people, you know, preparation's key, warm up, be ready to play a round of golf. You're not exactly living by it. Um, well, as it's, you know, as we were up at six this morning, my preparation was just get out of bed and wake up. And that was my preparation. Breakfast was good though. Yeah, it was good. Coffee was amazing. So 220, which is a tricky distance for me. It's a tricky distance for a par three anyway. But five wood is not a full one, so I'm gonna to have to grip down. So I shorten the overall length of the club and then just swing nice and easy. I'm also gonna try and cut it back into the wind. There's loads of green behind the pin. So again, it's just one of those things where I just don't wanna be short, I don't wanna be in that bunker. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. It pitched right of the green on the slope and then kicked further right, so it did miss by loads, but not ideal. It's just an hard par three, Sean. I don't know anything <laughs> to add, mate. Just an hard par three. So 60 degree wedge, I'm going to get it up over the slope, onto the green, roll it out to the pin, hopefully hold it. Simples. Simples. Hmm. Yeah, that was very much a uh, an early morning shot. <laughs> good save that. That was a good save after that chip shot. Difficult par three. I mean, any par three over 220 yards. If you're getting, if you're getting a three on that, that is a okay. What's the average for a par four, would you say? Uh, I mean, it depends. I mean, this is a European tour venue. Well, certainly it was till 2017. So a 470 yard par four for those guys isn't, you know, out of the question. Bear in mind, with, they hit the ball. Let's say they hit it 300 yards. It's only 170 yards left into the pin for them if they get it in the fairway. And that's going to be a seven iron. So, for the very top players, this is still a difficult hole. It's tight as well, this hole. But for a handicap golfer, this is... This is hell, John. Welcome to hell. Oh. That, that, really well. that looked really good. Go on and be good. Where is it? Yeah. You know what? I think it's only just got past the bunker, though. Is it because it's cold? You think it's slowing you down a bit? A touch. I mean, I shook it well, but it is... It's, obviously, it's early in the morning. It's probably about seven degrees. Moisture in the air as well. Moisture in the air, sleep in my eyes. Nowhere near <laughs> enough caffeine in my veins. <laughs> <laughs> it's like all around problems, but it's safe. That's the, that's the main thing off this hole. I think that's the best strike you've had today. I, I would say so. Thank you, John. I appreciate that. For your okay. kind words and your encouragement. Um, I've got 186 left, so the pin's a little bit at the back. The 150 meter marker is there on the fairway. I actually got further on than I thought. I thought I was going to be uh, just on the edge of that bunker, but yeah, it's worked out well. 186 with this, kind of like a hard eight or a four, hard eight or four, a hard five or a four. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, I, I think that's probably going to be a four then. I think that answers my question. Yeah. Very pretty bunker work at this hole, and every other hole, the bunkers have looked very nice. Pete has avoided them so far. Yeah, I kind of want to go in because they do look really good. Yeah, they look they're immaculate. They're really nice, actually. Oh, right, just a nice, easy, solid four, literally straight at the pin. There's no danger uh, to the right. It looks like there's just banking. So, yeah, go straight at it. Hit it. Hit it. Alright, just a little bit toey. Transfer, transfer birdie, sorry. Yeah, transfer birdie. I, I think on this hole, green regulation, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. 
So you just said green regulation. I don't know what you're talking about. So green regulation, guys, is basically for a scratch golfer. So a, I don't have a handicap, obviously, being a pro. So I've hit the fairway, so that would be a fairway in regulation. And then I've hit the green, and that's a green in regulation because it's a par four. You get what I mean? Yes. So if it's a par five, and I hit the green in three shots, that would be a green regulation. Par oh, okay. three, if I hit the green in one shot, that's a green regulation as well. So, so it, was a, it was a learning day. So it's, it's basically you're on track. It means I'm in regulation. Yeah, okay, yeah, but that's okay. This is completely different. No. On on track is like racing. Do I look like a hundred meter sprinter? Not without belly. <laughs> Pace wasn't bad. Oh no, it's a, it's a really bad putt actually. They're right out of the heel and... No. I was trying to give you some encouragement. I don't ever want to think about that putt again. Okay. Wow. But par. However, a par on that hole is absolutely fine. So level through five, last hole of this par. This way. I've, I've never seen a bench complex like this on the course. So you've got your whole layout, you've got your bench, you've got a kind of a swing bin there for general waste, I guess. You've got bottles. <laughs> I like a bottle of whiskey, uh, which people are thinking they're going to be putting in there. You've got your ball, washer, towel, little ashtray. I like that. A bit cold in the middle of winter, I reckon. On yeah, your yeah. But, but the bench game is strong. I, d I think I just saw a thing that was a wild chipmunk. Chipmunk? Yeah, it looked like a chipmunk. They're American. I know. That was weird. It, was, it just kind of ran into that field. It definitely wasn't a squirrel. It was probably a squirrel, it folks. A squirrel, he, lives in, he lives in Didsbury. He has no idea what nature is. I'm not be funny, we've got parrots in Didsbury, wild parrots. So nature's messed up, man. It's all over the place. Nature's messed up. Anyway. All, right. all right, Attenborough. Listen, I'm going for his job. Sixth hole, par four, handicap nine, 260 yards to carry the bunker on the left-hand side. It's quite a tight hole, um, big bunker in front of the green. I'm just gonna try and rip a driver over the fairway bunker. If he does peel off right, I've got a little bit of room, but it is quite tight. 260 yard carry in this morning. I don't know, it's such and go, but as we've seen so far, just whack it. Go on, carry. Carry it. He's nervous, he's nervous. Don't know. Oh. I didn't see it bounce. I struck it okay, but I'm not sure. Actually, a little bit of a draw on it. Who knew I could draw it? <laughs> Not me. You've absolutely walloped it, Pete, and you're 20 meters or so beyond that bunker. Yeah, I've only got 85 left to the hole, so that's, that's not bad, actually. It's kind of like a 285 drive, mm. pretty much carry all the way, which is surprising considering I was kind of thinking 260 might be a push. Must be getting, must be getting loose now. Loose and... Yeah, must, I'm, I'm just loose as a goose. On you've this moose. Had a chocolate moose. <laughs> <laughs> That's an old TV advert for wine gums, if anyone's unsure. Sponsorship opportunities are available. For my American audience. Yes. Do they even have wine gums in the States? Uh, jelly sweets, aren't they? Oh, well. So, looking at that layout, how are you going to play it? Because obviously you've got a big old bunker protecting it. Yeah, I mean, the bunker's short. There's a little bit of room after it, so I can attack. Generally, with a wedge shot, because the margin for error is probably greater, I should be attacking this a lot more. And that's what I've been working on my wedge distance is about. Just trying to figure out how I can gap correctly with my yardages. So when I'm in a situation like this, when I've got a good drive, I mean, it's a little bit of the rough, but it's lying okay. I just want to attack. Attack, attack, attack. Oh. oh. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, if you've not checked out um, my video on wedge distance and wedge gapping, make sure you do that. I'll try and include a link here because it's 
it, it's worthwhile doing. It's certainly worked for me. It's always easy to say after a good shot then. <laughs> Come on, birdie. Finish with a birdie. Ah. It's two in a row I've pushed. Not ideal, however, that is six holes at a European Tour venue off the back tees, level par for the first six, which is probably a little bit better than I was expecting. And I have to say, since the first hole, the course has got better and better and better. I've not played here before, and looking at the remaining holes, they look pretty amazing. So I can't wait to actually carry on. And guys, thank you so much for watching. Just want to say a big thank you to Quellness for actually getting me out here and getting me to play these courses. I've never played in Germany before, so this is a completely new experience. And so far, it's been a very positive one. Guys, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and follow me on my other social media platforms, which are all linked in the description below. And I've got two more parts coming from here. Let's see if I can break part on this European tour venue, and hopefully you're learning stuff as we go. So guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.